come you to another liberation hour in the mighty name of Jesus. I trust God that through his word this morning, he will set you free. He will bring healing to your lives. He will turn around every area of challenge in Jesus' name. And you have cause to glorify the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jehovah God. I prophesy to your life in this new month, the Lord God of glory will do new things. Yes, it is the last month of the year, but God does not come late. God does not come late. It did not come late to rescue, to deliver Lazarus. He did not come late to visit Sarah. He didn't come late to rescue that widow of Nain. Just about when they were going to step out with that dead son, Jesus showed up. God will show up for you this month. He will show up for you this last month of the year. Every outstanding blessing that has been promised you from January that has not come to reality, they will come into manifestation. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord God who has brought you to the last month will bring you to the new year. You will not be cautioned. I pray for you, your life will not be used to fulfill satanic quota. All the quota that they have, they have marked to say, look, we must submit this number of lives to Satan. Before the end of 2020, your life will not be among. Your blood will not be spilled. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord will maintain your security. You're going out and your coming shall be safe. In the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. The theme of this morning's liberation hour is recovered from being a ransom. Recovered from being a ransom. Amen. And our text is Romans eleven twenty five. Recovered from being what? A ransom. Recovered from being a ransom. Praise God. Let's just read our text. We're coming back to it. Romans 11, 25 says, For I will not, brethren, for I will not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this world, mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel, until what? The fullness of the Gentile be coming. Amen. What's the theme once again? Recovered from being a ransom. As many as have been made ransom, either totally or in part, the Lord will liberate you through this message in the name of Jesus. So what is a ransom? If we must be recovered from being a ransom. From dictionary, it says, a rans ran it says ransom is money demanded for the return of a captured person. Money demanded for the return of a captured person. And most of us can relate with this, with what is happening in our environment, in Nigeria. You know, the uh, terrorists, the kidnapping, and asking for ransom. That money be paid for the release of the uh, captured person. This also says it is payment for the release of someone. Payment for the release of someone. Also, ransom is what is offered for the release or comfort of another. Ransom is what is offered for the release or comfort or elevation or for one good thing or another of, of another. Praise God. Let's look at the word of God. Exodus 21, verses 29 to 30. We see the word ransom being mentioned there. Exodus 21, verses 29 to 30. Exodus what? 21, 29 to 30. Say, but if the ox were wont to push with his hand in time past, and it had been testified to his owner, and he had not kept him in, but that he had killed a man or a woman, the ox shall be stoned, and his owner also shall be what? Put to death. Verse 30 says, if there be laid on him a sum of money, then he shall give for the ransom of his life whatsoever is laid upon him. We saw that the word ransom was mentioned there. This is the law in the Old Testament. Somebody has an ox, you know, and the ox goes to, um, to boot somebody and the person dies, you know. 
And the Lord says, if the person had been warned before, that this is your ox is notorious, so, that is uh, hunting people to injure them, and the person does not do anything about it, then, uh, one, the ox will be put to death, and because the ox killed somebody, the Lord says, that person also shall what? Have been put to death. Say, but if the aggrieved decides to allow him to live, then he has to offer something as a ransom for his what? For his life. He will pay a penalty. He pay a fine. He will give something for him to live. He will give something in exchange for his release, for his being left to live. Praise the name of the Lord. So what does it mean to be a ransom? To be a ransom means to be exchanged, you know, uh, for something. Uh, it's to be an instrument or a means of exchange for the freedom, for the liberty of another. To be an instrument of exchange. To be a means given to facilitate the freedom or liberty of another. That is what it means to be a ransom. You know, you are given for another to be free. You are given for another to live. You are given for another to move forward. You know, praise God. Rans to be a ransom is to be the token offered for the freedom, for the comfort, for the elevation of another, for one good thing of another. It's also to be the object sacrificed for the welfare of another. To be the object what? Sacrificed for the welfare of another. And that is confirmed in Isaiah 43, verse number 3. Isaiah 43, verse number 3. It says, For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of what? Israel, thy Savior. I gave what? Egypt for thy ransom. Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Remember how he gave Egypt for their ransom? In Egypt, in Exodus 12. He said, Look, Pharaoh, Israel is my firstborn. It's my firstborn. If you don't let my firstborn go, I will deal with your firstborn. And you have to kill uh, the firstborn of the Egyptians for Israel to be released. He gave his, his, their, first, their first son were killed, were offered as ransom. They were what was used to settle. Because after that, Pharaoh had no choice but to do what? To let go. Praise the name of the Lord. So that's what it means for one to be a ransom. Praise God. So how can a person be a ransom? A person becomes a ransom when that person is being used either partially or totally to facilitate the freedom, the progress, the elevation, the release. Name it. Anything good for another. When a person becomes a ransom, when he's being used either partially or totally to procure Something good for another. Freedom, release, elevation, promotion, life, you know, for another. It is when a person is being, or his benefits, or rights, or freedom is being sacrificed for that of um, another. I mentioned partially or totally because in the issue of ransom, something has to be given. It could be a total life. A life could be given as ransom. An aspect of one's life can be given as ransom. Somebody's marriage can be given as ransom. Somebody's uh, glory can be given as ransom. Somebody's academic uh, pro progress can be given as ransom. Somebody's prosperity can be given as ransom. And somebody's entire life can be given as ransom. That's why we said it could be partially and it could be what? Totally. Praise God. Let's come back to our text. Um, Romans 11 verse 25. Romans 11, verse 25. It says what? For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this what? Mystery. Take note. Apostle Paul called it what? Mystery. What is mystery? Something that baffles understanding and cannot be easily explained. It baffles understanding. It can't be easily explained. Mystery is something that is hidden, that is secret, that is deep, and it takes a searching out to have what? Understanding. He called it a mystery. What is the mystery, beloved? It says, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the, fulfill, until the fullness of what? The Gentiles be coming. 
Amen. Blindness has come upon Israel. Partial blindness has come upon Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles will be coming. When you go read the entire Romans 11 from beginning to the end, you will understand it better. When you look at another translation, look at how it puts it, the easy-to-read version. It says, I want you to understand this secret truth. See how it describes mystery, secret truth. I want to understand this secret truth. That is the easy, that the English revised version. English revised version. It says, brothers and sisters, this truth will help you understand that you don't know everything. The truth is this. Listen, say the truth is this. Part of Israel had been made stubborn. But that will change when, in, when enough non-Jewish people have come to God. Part of Israel have been made stubborn. King James says blindness has occurred to them. You read another version, it says there is hardness of hearts so that, so, so that the Gentiles can come in. It says so that the non-Jewish people can come to God. Praise God. So the, some of the Jews, as it were, were sacrificed for the Gentiles what? To be rich with the gospel. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name. How did God do, it, do this? This is what we, what we talk about. What, what we, this is the description of what? Of ransom. Some of the Jews giving to facilitate the, Jew, the non-Jews, the Gentiles, to allow them to come to the saving knowledge of Christ for them to be established. You remember when Christ came, his focus was on to who? The Jews. Remember the Syrophoenician Syrophini- Syrophini- woman that said, Jesus, heal my daughter. He said, look, I am not sent, but to the lost house of um, Israel. So, and but when he was going, he said, look, that you'll be giving power and you'll be my witness to what? To the entire world, to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria, and to the uttermost part. So, later, the gospel will be extended to every part of the world. It will be limited to the Jews. But God had to, for the Gentiles, for the non-Jews, to come to the saving knowledge of Christ, he had to, at a point in time, harden the heart of the Jews so that those who are focusing on them can leave them alone and do what? Focus on the Gentiles. Because at the point, the Jews that saw Jesus Christ being crucified, they said Jesus Christ had not what? Had not come. Even till now in Israel, there are still some people, they are still expecting Jesus to what? To come. Even till this present day. They call them, there's a name for them. They practice Judaism. They don't, pra- they don't believe in, in gospel. It's just the Old Testament. They say Jesus is here to come. Praise God. So, Apostle Paul was explaining that it's a mystery that blindness has happened to the Jews, partial blindness to some of them so that the Jews, the Gentiles can come in. You know, um, so when they saw that, the more they preached to them, the more they had in their hearts, so they said, look, we leave you to yourself. We face those who are ready to receive us. Just like when you are laboring on some people in the gospel, you labor, labor, labor. They are not receptive. Yeah, there are some people, they, a little truth, their lives will change. So just shit focus. Praise God. But Apostle Paul was saying that that was done deliberately by the Lord so that the Jews, the non-Jews can do what? Can come to the saving knowledge of Christ. So as it were, some of the Jews were what? Were like ransom for uh, Gentiles to come to the knowledge of the truth. Praise God. So how did God do it? When you go back in the same Romans 11, look at what God allowed to happen so that uh, that mystery can take place. In Romans 11, uh, verses 7 and 8. It says, what then? What then? Israel had not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election had obtained it, and the rest were blinded. There were some, the elect, that the Lord allowed to embrace the truth. Those ones, he said they were, they were, they were the elect, like chosen by God. He said, but the, the rest, he did what? He said, the rest were blinded. They were blinded. Praise God. Verse 8. It says, according as it is written, God had given them what? The spirit of slumber. Eyes that they should not see. And ears that they should not hear. Unto when? This day. Praise God. So God did it deliberately so that uh, focus can be 
Otherwise, those of us who are Gentiles, who are not uh, Jews, who have received uh, gospel, they would have gotten to Africa. They would have just remained there where? In Jerusalem, in Israel. Praise God. And focus on themselves. The entire world would not have had the opportunity to receive gospel. So, as it were, we say that the Jews, some of the Jews were offered as what? As ransom. For what? The Gentiles. To, for them to be able to receive uh, salvation, and, I mean, embrace the gospel, you know. So, the setback, some setback. Unto the Lord. Amen. So, that was an example of ransom. Being of one, being ransom for another. Praise God. Don't forget, what is the theme? Recover from being a ransom. Praise God. So God allowed it to happen to some of the Jews so that the Gentiles can advance. They can move forward in knowledge of God. So they were, as it were, a ransom for the Jews. Beloved, the same thing, that same mystery is being adopted by the enemy, by the devil today. That same mystery, it's a mystery that you can use one so one as sacrifice as a seed to be able to harvest another. God did it for a good purpose. But today, Satan is using the same mystery, you know. And I want to tell you, just as it, that we saw there that it happened to who? To a nation. So if it happened to a nation, it can happen to what? To communities. It can happen to what? To families. It can happen to what? Individuals. If a whole nation part of the whole nation was offered as ransom for another set of people, another, for other nations. How much more? If a nation could be offered, then communities within the nations were already offered. Then families within the nation were offered. Then individuals within the nation were also what? Were offered. So it could happen to one at a personal level. At a, you could have families that could be offered for other families. You could have communities offered. You could have nations offered. You could have institutions offered. You could have, like I said, part of uh, um, a person's life offered. Amen. You say, Pastor, how come that is possible? Why is it possible? It is possible on two bases. Number one is the basis of what? Authority. Base of what? Authority. Because God, being who he is, our creator, the almighty, he has authority over all. And it is his will that all will come what? To the knowledge of Christ. So he used his authority, his power, by whom he is, to make that to happen to Israel. And it was for a while. If you read it, temporarily. It was not going to be forever. Temporarily, as well, we shall also see that he made promise that he will reverse it. Praise God. So, on the basis of authority, anyone who has authority over, a one, over one's life can offer one as what? As ransom. As ransom. Can offer one as ransom. Amen. In the workplace, we have seen people being offered as ransom. They wanted to sack somebody. They said, look, uh, or they wanted to uh, downsize, retrench. And there were people that um, were really eligible by the structure, but because somebody is well favored, they say, Look, this is how this place to go. We want to downside by 20 people. And this, by the structure, by the system, some people will actually fell out to be those qualifying. But because of favor, they can ransom. Because they let this one go instead of this. I've seen it happen in the workplace. Praise God. Because of the person in charge has all authority, is in position to do it. Praise God. We've seen people's names being deleted. <laughs> You know, some funny things happen in Nigeria. Somebody um, uh, got admitted. The first list came, saw his name or her name. By the time they said um, uh, something has happened, they have withdrawn the list. They brought out another list. The person went to the number where he or she saw the, the name. It was another, another name has been put there. Praise the name of the Lord. All manner of things. Somebody came to me recently, gone through shortlisting for. Uh, job for a particular 
uh, state government appointment. The list was there, first five, first five. There, but when the final list will come out, you know, how that name was there. You know, when they had, the list had come out, when they were now giving letters, this person waited, no letter came. I went and said, but I, I saw that my name was there. You know, but when they said, which name? By the time they brought out the list again, another name has replaced. But somebody who was inside the system went and saw that the penultimate list, the name was still there. But when the list for letters was brought out, to be, just to be, the list of those shortlisted, the name was there, and then it, that should be the list that should form the basis of uh, distribution of letters. But when they now brought list for letter distribution, the name has disappeared. Another name has been used to replace it. Praise the name of the Lord. That person was used as a ransom for another. Praise the name of the Lord. So, I said it could happen on the basis of what? Authority. Anyone who has authority over one's life can offer one as a ransom. Can offer. If someone has authority over a nation, you know, you don't want to go into some international politics. You know how some people are the hands of affairs. Offer, give, sign off, you know, uh, places and all that. Amen. The second basis that could allow one being offered as a ransom to take place is on the basis of covenant and uh, entanglement. Covenant and entanglement. In which case, there is an agreement that should be so. There's an agreement that should be so. But uh, this time around, most times when people enter into this covenant, they are not aware. Because nobody will consciously sign in to, be a, to enter into a covenant of being a ransom for another. Except the person deliberately wants to sacrifice that aspect of his life or her life. Or, you know, praise God. Those who do that are those who are in the occult and, you know, they deliberately decide to offer because of what they are to get by virtue of the covenant. Maybe they want power. Maybe they want um, uh, promotion. You know, so they sign off aspect of their lives as ransom. You know, some want through the occult. Occultic means they want money. They want wealth. And they sign off longevity as offering it for what? For uh, power, for prosperity, for position, and all that. So these two major bases allow for the operation of um, ransom. Either there is an authority that could do it, or there is a covenant, an agreement that allows it to take place. Now, this authority or covenant could also be at foundational level, in which case it may not be a direct dealing. It could be what one's parents have done or what one grandparents have done. They have, because of their position, uh, offered their sons, their daughters as ransom. Of course, they have authority over their sons, over their daughters. Or uh, we have seen cases where an ancestor offered people in the lineage by position. We give this as ransom for this, for this. We have seen it at the level of the land. We are, there was turbulence in the land. And the, uh, the leader in charge, either as a king or whatever, you know, in satanic way, said, okay, what do we, went for consult, what do we do to have peace? in this land, and they say, okay, we will offer, you know, uh, either a person or part of people from the land as ransom for peace, as ransom for prosperity of the land. Praise the name of the Lord. So, Satan uses this mystery uh, to transact with people's lives. And the agents of darkness, they also use the mystery. Whereas God instituted it and God used it for a good thing, that Gentiles may come to know the Lord. And it was for a while, because later he revisited, and the Jews also began to embrace Jesus. The veil was removed from their eyes. You know, when you go read scriptures, it's like later they will weep that, ah, how come for all these years, what happened to us that we did not know that uh, Isaiah had come, that they will weep. God will remove the veil. Praise the name of the Lord. So God did it for a good purpose, but this, the enemy is using this mystery for evil. And using it to destroy life to afflict people, to limit people, to hold them back in diverse areas of um, life. Praise the name of the Lord. In my uh, years of ministry, I've seen people being used. There was a, a case where it was a son that was being used as ransom.
to uh, facilitate the prosperity of his father's business. Praise God. And in that particular case, the father did not know. The father just wanted prosperity in his line of business and went out for help. And they said, look, do you have a son? Say yes. Bring this and this and this of that son. And what he offered concerning his son was, uh, he didn't take the son there. He took property that belonged to the son. And that was what was used, like a trade by butter. So after the uh, rituals were done spiritually, he began to do well in business. He began to move forward. And he did well. And of course, was sponsoring the son. With, but it got to a point that when that son should now enter into levels that matter, he couldn't. He was stagnated. He struggled. He was a Christian. He prayed. He fasted. Went for deliverance to no avail. Until he began to pray investigative prayer and the Lord pointed to his father. He went to ask and that secret was uh, divulged. His prosperity, real prosperity had been used what? As ransom to advance his father. Praise God. We have a case like that. In this, this man was very wealthy. He owned estates. Not estates, estates. But his sons were miserable. Even as graduates, they were miserable. He offered them in a particular estate, um, he didn't offer them flats. He offered them as married people a room. And he had what? Estates. You know? Praise God. Until one of them came out and was, was refused to be contented. You know? Do you hear them say, our father is not this? They will say, ah, if your father, how come it's like this? They also don't understand and they did not fight for it. But it was discovered that uh, the prosperity of his children, not of one child, was ransomed to facilitate what? Prosperity. So when that child prayed and rebelled, you know, something happened. You know, power changed hands. And he began to move forward and the man began to come down. Praise the name of the Lord. Today, I believe with the understanding you will have, you will cry to God. Where your life has been offered as ransom, you will cry to God, God will deliver you. In the name of Jesus. I know of a particular uh, sister also. We saw that this, this sister was a woman of God. A woman of God because spiritual things operate by spiritual principle. They are no respect of anointing or uh, title. Praise God. Struggling even as a minister of God, things were hardly going for until she came for a program, liberation program, and then we began to inquire. And then she told us one thing that the mother used to do, made her to be feeding a live tortoise, kept in the place of business. And the daughter must be the one to feed, and the first daughter and the first son must be the one to feed the tortoise for many years. And business began to boom and <laughs> expand. Praise God. So, when during the course of prayer for liberation, the Lord opened our understanding. She was dreaming, feeding what? Tortoise. When we are inquiring, why is there no progress? Amen. She fed tortoise. There was a swap. You know, through the tortoise, they were, their own life glory was swapped. Slow down for the advancement of um, uh, the mother's uh, uh, business. Amen. There was another case. It was a man, you know. And um, this one, from what the man told me, the man was even conscious of it, but he couldn't do anything. He said it was as if it's the practice in their place. Uh, one child must be used as ransom for the others. In some places, it's the first son. In, some, in another place, one. They would just choose one. He will slave. He will slave. He said he would do it, you know. And uh, it wasn't just a physical one. There was a spiritual backing. Because as we began to pray, he began to see some things. And began to see the siblings in the in negative, uh, negative circumstances. Praise God. Until we inquired. It was, it was like his life sacrificed for the lifting of all his siblings. And he said by the arrangement, the siblings will now take care of his own uh, his children. Praise God. He won't amount to anything. His children will not amount to anything. But the siblings will be doing very well. And then the siblings are meant to take care of his, um, 
his own children, and take care of him. Praise God. His life being offered as ransom, given for others to uh, be lifted. Praise God. And very many cases like that. It could be, we have, we have come across cases where people's marriages were sacrificed. You know, I know a particular case, the marriages of the children were sacrificed for the, uh, for the establishment of the marriage of the parents. Praise God. I know at least there are two or three cases like that. We are uh, a mother seeing that um, the marriage was what? Shaky. Went out. And then it has to be marriage for marriage. So she did some things and then the marriage became stabilized and she stayed in the husband's house. So later in life, all the children, well to do, well read, maritally, were struggling. Not able to get married. The one that got married, it was um, like um, two uh, friends, two house, um, two enemies living together. Praise God. Until the secret was known that, because we, as we began to pray, that person began to show up, say, go and ask what happened. And then the mother opened up. Praise God. Ransom. The marriage of the children offered as ransom to secure her home so that she wouldn't lose um, the marriage. I can tell you very many like that. Praise the name of the Lord. So, because of the issue of ransom, what are the consequences of a uh, one being offered as ransom? Um, just as it's clear to us, that aspect of one's life that is being sacrificed, that is being given for the release, for the elevation, for the progress, for the liberty of another, one will suffer loss from that aspect of one's life. So if it is the marriage that was offered, it's either the person finds it difficult to marry, or the person does not enjoy marriage, the marriage is turbulent, or there is separation, or there is divorce. But there will be things to, there will be things happening on the face of it. Either the husband be misbehaving, or the wife. But you see, most times those things are peripheral. They are not the main thing. There are things that are foiling those things. Praise God. The main issues are hidden. They are hidden until you pray. You say, ah, but when I married this man, he wasn't like this. When I married her, she wasn't like this. Of course. But there are some things that will, you know, just like where we read, God allowed partial blindness, made the Jews to harden their hearts, made them stubborn against the gospel so that they would not respond, so that the Jews and the Gentiles can be helped. So the victim will suffer losses. It could be temporary and it could be permanent. Even as much as losing life from some of the cases that we have encountered. You know, lives being offered as ransom for uh, a grandma not to die. For a grandpa not to die. You know, uh, like that. Marriage is being offered for power. For release. Amen. I share once with us how uh, this was a case I knew about. I saw. Amen. How a very young boy, the, the lenses he was wearing there was very thick. And I was at that crusade. And I was ministering along with the, uh, with the prophet. And he said today, he spoke and said that power will change hands. You know, that uh, the that he spoke and said by the time they got home that that child will have recovered back the sight. Praise God. And truly, by the time the child will get home, um, he removed his glasses. After a while, without using the glasses, he was able to see. And then grandma's, grandma's uh, sight reversed. Meanwhile, before grandma was seeing sharp sharp in her old age without glasses. And her grandson was using double whatever. Very thick lens. Praise God. Today, anything about your life that has been offered as a ransom, God will recover for you in Jesus' name. Amen. He will recover for you in Jesus' name. Amen. I know because of this uh, mystery that the devil is, being, is using to afflict people, very many people today are finding it difficult to make headways in life. Some are finding it difficult to get married. Some find it difficult to, to, offer, to have children because the children they should have had, have been offered as ransom for something else. Some are finding it difficult to have children. Some are finding it difficult to live. They are just struggling. Some are finding it difficult to make progress academically. And some are having challenges in diverse areas because 
those things that they are lacking have been offered as what? As ransom. Because what has been offered concerning you, you don't longer have. So you don't have it again. And because it's spiritual thing, you don't know. Praise God. But today, there will be liberation in the name of Jesus. Just like God did to Israel, God promised deliverance to Israel. Look, let's go back to our text in Romans 11, 26 to 27. See what God said. Romans 11, 26 to 27. It says, and so all Israel shall be saved. As it is, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them. When I shall take away their sins, God promised that he will visit them. He will take away their sins. They will know. He said that day, you can read scriptures. It's in Revelation, Psalm 11, Psalm 14, verse 7, Psalm 106, verse 47, Isaiah 59, verse 20. God promised to send the Messiah, the Redeemer, you know, who will come again. The veil shall be taken away. That day they will weep and say, what happened to us? How come? You know, but it was of the Lord. Just temporarily to allow the Gentiles. But today, Satan is afflicting people using the mystery of what? Uh, ransom. Giving people in. At times we have seen siblings giving for others. They will give, they could be the first daughter, will be given as ransom for another daughter, for another son. You know, at times, one mother who has a favorite will use the glory of the other children as ransom to elevate just one child who is um, her favorite, you know, uh, some of these um, uh, mothers or fathers who have become powers, who, are, who wine and dine with the devil. Praise the name of the Lord. So God has promised that uh, it will visit. Also in Matthew 20, verse 28, before we begin to pray, Matthew 20, verse uh, 28, it says, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to do what? To minister and to give his life what? a ransom for many. So Christ has come to give his life as ransom for us. So what we're going to do is to lay hold on that provision. To say wherever uh, my life has been offered as ransom, my marriage, my glory, my prosperity, my longevity, I, I replace it with the life of Christ. Let Christ has offered himself for me. So I replace it with the life of Christ so that I can have back whatever of me has been offered as a ransom. And as we do that in the place of prayer today, the Lord will give us a victory in the mighty name of Jesus and will be recovered from wherever we have been offered as ransom in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's rise to our feet to pray. Uh, the Lord is here to set free this morning. Amen. Let's rise to our feet. Let's begin to thank God for what our ears have heard this morning. Say, Lord, I thank you for what my ears have heard. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for what my ears have heard. We have cases where they have offered one for the other. One for the other. They could have done it, but you have the opportunity now to be free. So you mustn't close your mouth at this hour. Begin to thank the Lord. Say, Father, I thank you. I thank you, Jehovah God, for the truth that you have opened my ears to hear. Thank you, O oh Lord, our Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you for this truth. It is an opportunity for you to recover from being offered as ransom. It is an opportunity for you. Yes, wherever, whatever of you that have been offered, today, the Lord will recover for you in the name of Jesus. You will not cry to God. Say, oh Lord, my Father, concerning being offered as ransom, show me great mercy. Show me great mercy in the name of Jesus. Let's open up and cry to God. Consign being offered as ransom. Yes. Some people should have, they should have died. They didn't want to die. They now offer children. Offer children's marriage. Offer children's glory. Offer children's prosperity. Lord, concerning being offered as ransom, show me your mercy, Lord. Show me your mercy, Lord. Show me your mercy, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. In the name of Jesus, Lord, show me your mercy. Lord, show me your mercy. Lord, show me your mercy. 
in the name of Jesus, concerning being offered, Lord, show me your mercy, Father. Show me your mercy, O Lord. Show me your mercy, O Lord. Ah, Lord, show me your mercy. We have seen it happen, even among spouses, where one is satanic, offered his or her spouse as ransom. We have seen it happen, even in ministry. Cry to God, show me your mercy, Father. Show me great mercy. Lord, today, concerning being offered as ransom, Lord, show me your mercy. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Say, oh Lord, my Father, shine your light into my life again. Let nothing about my life be hidden in darkness. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, my Father, shine your light upon my life again. Let nothing about my life be hidden in darkness. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and talk to God. Shine your light, oh Lord God, upon my life. Shine your light upon my life. Shine your light upon my life. Shine your light upon my life. Let nothing, let nothing about my life be hidden in darkness. In the name of Jesus, shine your light, oh God. Shine your light, oh God. Aha. Uh -huh. At the beginning, God commanded that there shall be light so that proper correction, proper repairs can take place. Shine your light. Shine your light into my life. Let nothing about my life be hidden in darkness. Ask the Lord to shine his light so that whatever has happened can be seen, can be known. Yes, shine your light, O oh God, into my life. Let nothing about my life be hidden in darkness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Some people are struggling today. They don't know why they are struggling. Some people are marking time. They are obedient to the word of God. They pray. They fast. They, they, they perform all their obligations. But they are wondering, God, have you forgotten me? Why are you not touching my life? It may be because there is a mystery. Mystery of being offered as a ransom. Affecting that person's life. Shine your light into my life. Oh God, let everything about my life be brought into light. Be brought into light. Be brought into light. Everything about my life. Let it be brought into light. In Jesus' name we pray. Say by your mercy, O Lord. Reveal to me wherever I have been offered as a ransom. Reveal to me whatever about my life has been offered as a ransom. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and call upon God. Yes, if your financial prospects have been offered, to prosper financially will be difficult until you know about it and you deal with it. Father, reveal to me. Reveal, reveal, reveal to me by your mercy. Whatever part of my life has been offered as a ransom, reveal to me wherever I've been offered as a ransom. Father, reveal. Let it not be hidden. Reveal to me, O oh God, whatever aspect of my life that has been offered as a ransom. Lord, reveal it to me. Lord, reveal it to me. Lord, reveal it to me. In the name of Jesus, reveal, O Lord, my Father, by your mercy reveal whatever aspect of my life that has been offered as a ransom. Make it known to me, O God. Make it known to me, O God. Make it known to me, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. No vacation some years past. This person was just wondering. I haven't done everything. I haven't prayed. I haven't gone through diverse deliverance. I haven't taught from mountain to mountain. Why for uh, why financially he was struggling? Amen. And he went to pray. And God opened his eyes. And he was and his ears. I was hearing. And the parents were deliberating that I hope this our son has not known what we did. Praise God. And the son was given to have an understanding that in those days, the father was terribly sick and was being carried from one place to the other and was taken to one of the white diamond churches. I won't mention it. He was taken there. And they did a spiritual work. You know, they do spiritual work. And the spiritual work they did was using the mystery of what? Ransom. And they took something about the son and was offered as ransom for the healing of uh, the father. The father got healed. But it was the expense of the finances, financial prosperity of the son. The son, who was even a minister of God, who was even doing well, working in the financial institution, was not able to 
prosperous um, financially, was struggling. And the Lord gave that revelation. And it was until then he could pray properly and he was helped. Where have people gone to? You know, some of our parents, some of them did it knowingly. Some of them they didn't even know. They just wanted help, wanted victory, wanted power, wanted solution. And they were told, bring one thing or the other. Or they submitted one thing of, of, their, of their children that was used what? As ransom. You will cry to God again. That's why we're asking. Let God show you so that you can pray appropriately. Say, oh Lord, my Father, reveal to me whatever transaction that took place concerning my life that made me to be a ransom. Reveal to me whatever transaction that took place concerning my life that made me to be a ransom in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, reveal by your mercy. Oh Lord, reveal by your mercy. Oh Lord, reveal by your mercy. Reveal, oh God, reveal. Reveal by your mercy whatever transaction that was done concerning my life that made me to be a ransom in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, reveal, oh Lord, reveal. Oh Lord, reveal, oh Lord, reveal. In the name of Jesus, reveal, oh Lord, reveal, oh Lord, reveal, oh Lord, reveal, oh Lord, Lord. in the mighty name of Jesus, whatever transaction. In Jesus' name we pray. I remember I handled a case. You know, um, this person's um, parent was jailed. Amen. Was what? Was jailed. Amen. And then um, it was um, the day, the person said it was the day, it was after this person was given back to, that suddenly they brought up the case again and the person who was jailed and the person committed the offense. The person was what? Was released. Amen. But the person did not understand because I was asking questions. And they gave a name to show that, uh, um, you know, how our parents give names. That to say that she brought about um, the release of the father. But the release of the father was not just done, it didn't happen accidentally. There was what? There was a, the guy that came, something about the guy was offered what? as a ransom to facilitate the release of the father. Because later, that aspect that was given, she was now lacking it. She was now suffering the lack of it, which was what brought her across me for help. But she didn't understand. Praise God. Praise God. So she was offered as a ransom to bring out. You see, unusually, they just reversed the case. And the man who had committed offense was released. Praise God. And they said, the child has brought joy, has brought freedom. Praise the name of the Lord. But they didn't say what they did for the child to bring freedom. You will cry to God. Say, by your mercy, O God. (laughs) Reveal to me what was done by my parents, by my ancestors, by those who had authority over me to sell me out as a ransom in the name of Jesus. Reveal to me, reveal to me, Lord to sell my glory, to sell my marriage, to sell my prosperity, to sell my longevity. Reveal to me, O Lord God, what was done. Reveal to me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, reveal, Lord, reveal. Lord, reveal in the name of Jesus. Lord, reveal. Reveal, O Lord God. Reveal, O Lord God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. We're going to bring forth repentance now because if God uh, must set us free, like I told us, uh, it happens on the basis of authority and covenants or entanglements. It must be that one brought himself under that authority or one was under that, that authority by birth or whatever. So, and the person who has the authority over one could do whatever he or she likes. So, one must bring forth repentance. One must repent of that evil work so that God can wade in and deliver. Praise the name of the Lord. And if it has to do with covenants, one must repent of it 
so that God can arise and deliver. Amen. And the authority can come, one can come under authority through association, through collaboration, through relationship, you know, through transaction. Amen. So you are going to go before the Lord. Say, Father Lord, I come to repent and to ask for your forgiveness for however I came under the authority that gave me out as a ransom. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, O God. Forgive me, O God, for whatever basis brought me under the authority that gave me out as a ransom, that gave out my marriage, that gave out my glory, that gave out my finance, that gave out my financial prosperity, that gave out my career, that gave out my education as ransom. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Forgive me, O Lord. Forgive me, O Lord, for whatever transaction. Lord, that brought me under the authority, that gave me out as ransom. O Lord, have mercy. O Lord, forgive me. O Lord, have mercy. O Lord, forgive me. In the mighty name of Jesus, have mercy and forgive me. Have mercy and forgive me. In the name of Jesus, Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for the transactions that brought me into covenant, that made me a ransom. Forgive me of the relationship. Forgive me of the covenant. Forgive me of the transaction. Forgive me of the association. Forgive me of the relationship, Lord, that allowed me to be offered as ransom in the name of Jesus. Forgive me, O Lord, of that transaction, of that association, of that relationship, of that covenant that allowed me to be offered as a ransom. Father, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Lord will forgive in Jesus' name. The Lord will forgive in Jesus' name. Let's rise to our feet as we separate ourselves from all such trans transaction, covenant, relationship, association. So you will declare, say, I. Let me mention your name now. Say, I, Daniel Kola Kobelo. I renounce. I reject. And I separate myself from the transactions, from the association, from the relationship, from the covenant, and all authorities that made me, that gave me out, in partially or totally, as a ransom. I renounce it. I reject it. I separate from it. That association, that transaction, that relationship, that covenant that gave me out as a ransom, I renounce it. I reject it. I separate from it in the name of Jesus. I renounce it. I reject it. I separate from it in the name of Jesus. That authority that gave me out, gave out my life, gave out my glory, gave out my marriage, gave out my finance, gave out any good thing about my life as a ransom for another. I renounce it. I reject it. I rebel against that authority in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. From that authority that gave out my life as ransom, I withdraw my consent. I withdraw my submission. I rebel against that authority in the name of Jesus. I declare I am no longer under the control, under the influence of that authority that gave out my life as a ransom, that gave out my marriage, that gave out my glory, that gave out my prosperity, that gave out my well-being, that gave out my childbearing as ransom. I am no longer under that authority. I rebel against that authority. I withdraw my consent. I withdraw my submission. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I declare that I mention your name. I'm no longer under the authority that gave my life out as a ransom. I am no longer under such authority. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Say in the name of Jesus. 
since Jesus Christ has offered himself, offered his life as a ransom for me, I, I put forward the token of the life of Jesus offered for me as a ransom to redeem my life, to redeem my life from being offered as ransom for any personality, for any power, for any group, for any institution, to any organization. In the name of Jesus, I offer Jesus Christ as a buyback, as a token of my redemption from being offered as ransom for anyone, for any power, for any power, for any personality. I offer Jesus as a ransom to buy back my life, my glory, my marriage, my childbearing, my finances, my prosperity, my academics, my graduation, any good thing that could have been offered concerning my life, I buy it back with the blood of Jesus, with the life of Christ that was offered for me. I buy it back. I take back. I take back. I take back. As I offer Jesus, I take back what has been offered concerning my life as ransom in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Say, Heavenly Father, all the authorities, all the authorities that offered my life or any aspect of my life as ransom, today, let such authorities be revoked over my life. Let the authorities be revoked. 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 In the name of Jesus. That authority that offered my life, offered my glory, offered my marriage, offered my childbearing, offered my well-being, offered my progress, my academics, my career, my advancement as, to, as, as ransom. Today, be revoked over my life. Be revoked over my life. Be revoked over my life. Be revoked. 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 In the name of Jesus. Amen. Say that covenant that gave me out as a ransom. In the name of Jesus. I break you. I break you. I break that covenant. I break that covenant. I cancel that agreement that offered my life, offered my marriage, offered my glory, offered my prosperity, offered my calling, offered my ministry as a ransom, offered my prosperity, offered my having children, offered my spouse, offered my children, offered my marriage as a ransom. You that covenant, you that entanglement, in the name of Jesus, I break you, 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 in the name of Jesus, I break you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Jesus, they are in your hands. Father, they are in your hands. All the power, all the powers. Jesus, they are in your hands. Jesus, they are in your hands. Father, they are in your hands. All the powers. All the powers. Jesus, they are in your hands. Father, they are in your hands. All the powers, all the powers. Jesus, they are in your hands. Jesus, they are in your hands. Father, they are in your hands. All the all the powers. Jesus, they are in your hands. Father, they are in your hands. All the powers. Jesus, they are in your hands, Father, they are in your hands. All the powers, oh Jesus, they are in your hands, Father, they are in your hands. All the powers, Jesus, they are in your hands. 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 Jesus, they are in your Jesus, the world is the one. Papa, the world is the one. Oh, Papa, the world is the one. 
Jesus, they are in your hand, Father, they are in your hand. All the powers, Jesus, they are in your hand, Father, they are in your hand. All the powers, Jesus, they are in your hand. Holy Ghost, do what thou Baba, do what thou do what that Holy Ghost do what that Baba do what that Oh. do what Holy Ghost do what that Baba do what that Oh. Take take do do what that Take take do what that Amen. You will now utter this cry. The Lord has revoked the authorities. You will now cry. Say, my father, my father, my father. Any aspect of my life that was offered as ransom. Heavenly Father, recover it for me now. When you have said it one whole time, say, oh Lord, recover. Father, recover it. Recover, recover, recover. Amen. It will be recovered. Power will change hands this morning. Glory will come back to his owner. Marriage will come back to the owner. Children will come back to the owner. Finance will come back. Amen. I said it in 1 Timothy 2 verse 6. He said, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. God has, Jesus Christ has offered himself so that you are no longer offered. You will cry to God. Say, my father, my father, my father. Whatever aspect of my life that was offered as ransom. Father, recover it now. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and cry to God. Whatever aspect of my life that was offered as ransom, recover it now. Recover it now. Recover it now. Father, recover. 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 Yes. Recover every aspect of my life that has been offered as ransom. Recover it now. Recover it now. Makuru Bushinda Kaba. Lord, recover it. Lord, recover it. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Beloved, we have seen God do things. Even if the person that was given to as ransom has passed on, the law is able to recover it. I shared a testament with us before how that we took a prayer like this and a brother who had graduated for three and a half years, they will not give him a certificate. They were just finding one excuses, uh, one excuse or the other in his institution. Three and a half years. He won't be let go, talk less of serving, talk less of working. Praise God. But as he prayed, he said he had a dream. And I think he said, follow me. He said he told man. The Lord took him to his father's house in the hometown. 
said there was a room then that the father didn't allow anybody to enter. He said, the man opened the room. He said, follow me. He entered. Chest of drawers. Open four. Second one. Third one. He said he saw a fire in his name. The angel put that and said, take. He called him and said, follow me. He said, on the way, as the angel was saying, follow me, he saw the stepmother kneeling down and begging. He said, he looked at her, follow me. He continued. Then they went to the grave. He said they went to the grave. And the angel tapped the grave. Pa, 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 pa. He said the grave opened. And then an, a man with gray hair came. And the angel said, give him back. They said he found in the hand of that dead old man something shining. He said the man said, take, take, take. He said he was afraid. He wouldn't have to take. He said the man put it in his hand and entered the grave again. And the grave closed. After that revelation, they called him from his institution. They apologized to him. Gave him his certificate. Within two years, his life changed. He was an engineer. He got a job with very cool and got married. My wife knows. Within two years, what was offered as ransom, even to the person that was dead, was gotten back. So I want to cry again that whatever. We have sisters that marriage is like impossible because the marriage has been offered as ransom. It's no longer there. What is not there, you cannot manifest. But you can get it back. Some people, they are childbearing. They will go to the hospital, clinically checked, everything okay, but no conception. Because until you take the right prayer, James 5 says, effectual fire prayer of the righteous availeth much. You will cry to God. Now, you will put there whatever you suspect has been offered as ransom. If it's your marriage, say, Father, my marriage that has been offered as ransom, recover it back for me. If it's your child bearing, if it's your financial prosperity, if it's your academics, whatever it is, you will put it in and you will cry to God. Say, my father, my father, my father. Whatever concerning my life that has been offered as ransom right now in the name of Jesus, recover it for me in the name of Jesus. Offer Yes, Lord, cry to God. Whatever thing concerning my life that has been offered as ransom by power by fire in the name of Jesus, recover it for me now. That marriage, recover it for me. That fruitfulness, recover it for me. That prosperity, recover it for me. Heavenly Father, recover, 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 recover. Open your mouth and cry to God. He is able to recover. He is able to recover. He is able to recover. Lord, recover it for me. It doesn't matter how long. It doesn't matter to who that it was offered, whether living or dead. Recover it for me, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Recover it for me. Lord, recover it. Lord, recover it. Recover it, my Father. Recover it, my Father. The time has come. The hour has come for me to manifest it. Whatever aspect, my marriage, my glory, my fruitfulness, my prosperity, my life, my sight, whatever, the work of my hands, recover it for me, my father. Recover, Lord, recover, Lord, recover, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let your amen be super dynamic now. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. You said in your word in Lamentations 3 verse 36 that to subvert a man in his cause, you do not approve of it. It is subversion to take one belongs to one, to one person, and use it to facilitate the escape of another in an evil way. Lord, when you instituted that principle, that mystery, you use it well to advance salvation of the Gentiles. But Satan has been using it to afflict your children. Therefore, Lord, as we have brought for repentance today, whatever transaction that allowed it to take place, Father, forgive in the name of Jesus. All the basis, the relationships, the associations, the covenants, the agreements, 
uh, uh, whatever that allowed the authority, the covenant to take place. Father, we overrule all in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And Lord, right now, because all power belongs to you. All power belongs to you. Elisha, that day, he threw the stick and the axe head swam back. We have something greater than that today. The word of God. Hebrews 4.12 says it is quick, it is powerful, it is sharper than a double-edged sword. It pierces to the very soul of soul and spirit, of joint and marrow, and that is a discerner of the thought and intent of the heart. Therefore, we send your word wherever the, the any aspect of the lives of your sons and daughters, of your servant and handmaiden had been offered as ransom. Let the word of God recover in the name of Jesus. All the transactions that were done that brought about the offering of your life totally or partially, your glory, your marriage, your childbearing, your prosperity, your academics, your career, your longevity, any aspect of your body, of your life as ransom, let that transaction be reversed in the name of Jesus. Let it be reversed. 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 In the name of Jesus. Any evil swap of organs of your body, of parts of your life, of blessings and breakthrough, of promises of God in your life, for the enhancement of anyone, a brother, a sibling, a parent, anyone, particularly in the polygamous setting, to advance anyone, today we command a reverser in the name of Jesus. A reverser. A reverser. A reverser in the name of Jesus. As the axe head swam back and they picked it. You said in your word in Job 20, verse 15, that you have swallowed up riches, you have vomited. I command right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, wherever anything, any aspect of the lives of your sons and daughters are that were given as ransom, Father, recover and restore in the name of Jesus. Lord, very many of your daughters, their marriages given as ransom. Today, we call them forth. Let them be recovered. And restore to them in the name of Jesus. Their childbearing. We recover them. Let them be restored to them. Take your children. Take your marriage back. Take your glory back. Take your prosperity back. Take your advancement back. Take your glory back. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask if what I have shared is the truth concerning that brother that you visited. And within two years, terrific transformation. Lord, I ask that you will send your angels to comb the land of the dead, to comb the land of the living, to comb the waters, to comb the earth, to comb the heavenly places, to ransack the houses, their father's houses, their mother's houses, their towns, their villages, where they have lived before, where they reside, the father's houses, and recover for them in the name of Jesus. Take back your marriage. Take back your glory. Take back your children. Take back your prosperity. Today, power changes hands in your life. So shall it be. In Jesus' name, it is settled. Amen.